My grandfather was an inventor, his father was an inventor, um, both my parents are mechanical engineers, so I grew up learning how amazing it is to be able to see a problem and then design and build your own solution to that problem. So for my senior thesis, I'm working on a device to clean paint rollers. The paint rollers you use to paint a house, inside or outside, are often thrown out after one use, which causes a huge environmental waste, as well as costs a fair bit to the painters. So from there, I started working on designs of a device that would actually wash and dry these rollers so that they could be reused. It would be a very simple problem to solve if I could make a device that cost $150 to make but to make it affordable so that people would use it rather than just throwing out their paint rollers and buying new ones, making it at that low of a price point is what has made this project a very real challenge. I first found out about Engineers Without Borders when I was visiting colleges before I even decided to come here. After freshman year though, I really dove in head first and we spent over a year to work on designing a house to hold teachers for a small school in rural Tanzania. I was lucky enough to go with a few other students and professional engineers and lead the team for part of the trip to actually build this schoolhouse that we, that we spent a year designing. Most of what we had designed and planned and researched before we went there fell apart within minutes of ending up on the ground. One of the engineers on the team picked up one of these cinder blocks and broke it in half with his hands. So we had to do a lot of work trying to first find the best quality ones we could get and then modifying our design to account for the much weaker material properties we had to work with. I think the biggest thing I took away from the experience was the ability to work with people. The fact that it wasn't just working with the team that I went there with, it was really working with the community. And even people that have never studied engineering in their life had a lot to offer and I think it was very eye-opening to see that firsthand rather than just people telling me that. This is the bow and arrow press. Um, it's part of Adam's house. It's named for literally being on the corner of Bow and Arrow Street. It's been around for a number of years. I found out about it when I got placed into Adam's house my sophomore year. Rather than sitting at your computer and typing out what you want it to say and printing it off, to write a simple letter, you have to arrange it all, find all of the individual letters in lead, space them out, fit them together, put them on the press, ink the press, run it through to make one copy of what you want. So there's a lot of challenge to it, but it also provides a lot more peace of mind and a lot more pride in what you make. I think my engineering mindset definitely makes me really enjoy the workings of these presses, um, the intricacies of how they're made and how all of the components work together, from some of the more modern presses like I'm sitting next to that use electricity, to some of the hundreds of year old ones that we have where it's entirely mechanical and powered by your foot. Sailing has been an amazing experience at Harvard. I got into it my freshman year. I would say sailing is a combination of mental and strategical excellence as well as physical performance and there's a lot of strategy. So it's like going to the gym and playing chess at the same time and it was that combination of physical skill and tactical skill that I loved about the sport. After I graduate I have the honor of being awarded a Rockefeller Fellowship to study swordsmithing in Toledo, Spain, to learn the nuances of the ancient art of swordsmaking. It combines a lot of the aspects of things I've been interested in for my whole life. I've studied fencing since elementary school. I also picked up kendo, which is the Japanese style of sword fighting. I also shoot um, medieval longbow. So, that, as well as my interest in material science from the engineering standpoint and how you manufacture something and how it was manufactured 2,000 years ago, combined with my interest in art, really all comes together to be best exemplified by making swords in the traditional form. But I hope as an engineer, having taken heat transfer and material science and thermodynamics, that I will be able to 
get a much deeper understanding of those processes that I would not otherwise have gotten if I hadn't had this education.